for Borough. It had been coming, really. And the mean Dean machine celebrates his 50th goal in the top flight in England. A classic corner. Swirled in by Townsend. Monka. And he picks out Pierce with a precise pass. Manchester United. They swept the length of White Hart Lane. Beckham produced as he does so often a splendid cross. Giggs might have scored. Walker, unfortunate, having made the save. The ball broke straight to Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, who tucked it away. It's Tottenham Hotspur nil, Manchester United won. David Beckham, the supply line once more. And it was swept in. Solskjaer getting in front of Sol Campbell. That's hard enough in itself to do. Then you've got to come up with a sweet touch. The sixth Manchester United player in trouble with the referee today. And with Roy Keane spared the lucky but it's not seven. Here comes uh, Anderton. Campbell! Well, that was a splendid header from Sol Campbell. And now we can concentrate on the football again. After the flashes of temper, George Graham's side have scored. Darren Anderton with the free kick. And a great climb by Campbell on this form, Stam a hard man to beat in the air, but Campbell did beat him to it. And it's Tottenham Hotspur 1, Manchester United 2. 20 minutes to go. This is Shinola. possibly be Tottenham's last chance to get something from the game. They gave Manchester United a two-goal start in 18 minutes. Taken by Anderton. once more he's taken the free kick thinking it's his Jim Smith will be encouraged by the last 10 minutes his team has just showed a little bit more heart for the fight it's Carbonari who strikes it took a deflection the Derby supporters don't mind they're ahead Horatio Carbonari chance and Derby are ahead but now it's Flo first touch just deserted him when he needed it most and boom now just comes out of the six yard box passing game for Flo and has he equalised he has that's a super finish by the Norwegian well he came off the bench in midweek to score the winner but from the start, he scored the goal that, for the time being at least, keeps Chelsea's long unbeaten run going. Found so 
much space in the heart of that Derby defence. Super Bowl four by Jody Morris. And just one touch by Shaw Andre Flo. Sixth goal of the season. This Chelsea team is built to attack. And they're not going to sit back and settle for a 1-1. This is Poyet. And it's 2-1. has turned this game on its head and Chelsea are in front gloom for Boom but delight for Poyet real first time effort Boom was struggling and that's nine now for Gustavo Poyet and that's the centre forward being pushed all the way into a left back position but showing his skill there and it's set Derby going forward one shot makes a run through the centre he's offside at the moment he's back onside he's aimed towards one shot he's onside Palo one shot Well, I think you can see why he and Derby have struggled for goals this season. They don't come much better in terms of chances. It's desperation time for Derby County. One chop. Played out to Harper. It's one chop! And it's... In injury time, Derby County have surely got themselves a point. And it's the substitute, Dean Sturridge. The cross was from the other substitute, Harper. One shot. Well, he didn't mean that. And Sturridge gets Derby a crucial goal. Four minutes of injury time and Poom is in no hurry to... They've worked hard for 90 minutes, had masses of possession, most of the territory, and once again they came away with nothing. This was Charlton's fourth defeat on the trot, and the dressing room talk afterwards cannot have been too comfortable. It was certainly long. So far, Alan Kerbishley has had his players in the changing room, in their kits, for an hour and 25 minutes after the final whistle. We need to skin a few things off our chest here because, uh, you know, we, we feel that we've held our own for most of the season and uh, we're not going to let it go lightly. And, uh, no, we're not talking about crisis or anything like that. It's just a, a frank, frank discussion about the way we all feel. But some of the results we've incurred in the last seven weeks have been our own undoing. We've, we've caused them ourselves. It was the first half that especially angered Kerbishley falling behind after a quarter of an hour to an Andy Booth goal for the corner which caught Charlton's defence off guard. Until then, Charlton had given them as good as they'd got, but Booth was allowed to twist and swivel his way into space and pick his spot. In fact, Wednesday's manager, Danny Wilson, admitted afterwards that it wasn't until this moment of sheer magic after 64 minutes from Benito Carboni that Wednesday took a hold of the game. Only a certain type of player can do that type of thing on a consistent basis. You, know, you might get a player who maybe once a season may do it, but Ben is capable of doing that every week. You know, and um, <clears throat> if you don't close him down, he's, he's got the vision and the and the, the expertise to be able to, to produce what he did. And uh, obviously, again, it's a fantastic goal for us. It was the moment he looked up as he jinked in field that you knew he knew he was going to score from fully 30 yards. <laughs> Uh, it's very, very nice. I like to, uh, because um, it's uh, very quickly. It goes right in the corner. So it's a uh, very beautiful goal. Carboni's quick thinking and vision made the third goal too, calling for a quick free kick and measuring a perfect cross for Petter Rudy to crash home his volley. 3 0 it was, and if the result flattered Wednesday a little, that only increased Charlton's unhappiness. Their top scorer, Clive Mendonca, was relegated to the bench and only made the last 10 minutes or so. It made no difference either. 
Have the players said anything to you? Yeah, I mean, they've, they've had their say, and I'm, I'm quite open about that, and, you know, I'm happy for them to have their say, you know. The last thing is for them to be quiet and just think that what I say is, is, is it. Obviously, what I say on a Saturday is it, that, that's fair enough, but I've been asking one or two opinions from, from one or two of them regarding how they feel that, uh, you know, if we could improve in certain areas. Something needs to be done quick, but this player could be forgiven for the goodies and goal drought ended emphatically to give Everton the lead against the run of play. Yoko scoring his first in the league and only Everton's third Premiership goal at home all season. Having scored one, Bakayoko could have got a barrow load. The Saints' defence, as always, very charitable, but Gary Monk was let off the hook by Paul Jones. And as Everton's domination increased, so did the chances. Mikel Madar, making his first start under Walter Smith, also found Jones on top of his game. But it was Bakayoko that was causing the panic. The four and a half million pound signing from Montpellier has been criticized on Merseyside, but he's beginning to show the form that won him so many admirers in France. And when Everton did beat Paul Jones, they couldn't beat the woodwork. Alex Clellan's neat one-two with Madar deserving better. Before Mark Hughes proved that even if his goals have dried up, He's still better in the other half of the pitch. Southampton have been in the top flight for more than 20 years now, and they've had their narrow escapes before. Matt Letizier was quoted this week as saying they've been in worse positions than they are now. But at two games short of the halfway stage and only 10 points and 12 goals to their name, it's hard to remember many. Will this be the year the Saints run out of miracles? And as Dave Jones was left wondering where salvation might come from, Bakayoko was wondering how he didn't pick up the match ball. But the Evertonians were left safe in the knowledge there could be life without Duncan Ferguson after all. Everton won, Southampton nil. at East Midlands Derby at Filbert Street where Matt Elliott came close to opening the scoring for Leicester. But it was Nottingham Forest who did take the lead after 13 minutes. Marlon Harewood set up Pierre Van Hoydonk for his third goal of the season. This, the best side of Van Hoydonk, we were later to see his work. It was a lead Forest held until just before half-time. Leicester found Steve Guppy in space and he had the time to deliver a precise cross to Emil Heskey. 1-1 at the break. Leicester moved ahead after they were awarded a controversial penalty. Andy Johnson guilty of handball according to referee Mike Riley. Matt Elliott made it 2-1 from the spot kick. Then came the game's main talking point. Pierre van Hoydonk was sent off for this challenge. The victim, Leicester's Steve Walsh. The Dutchman was instantly shown the red card. And with his departure went Forrest's main hope of getting back into the game. Leicester took advantage of their numerical superiority with a fine individual goal from Steve Guppy to steal their victory have now gone 14 Premiership matches without a win. Wimbledon on the attack here. Ben Thatcher on the left flank crosses to Marcus Gale, who gives it to Robbie Earle, who is online at Netscape. The Jamaican connection at work in this one. Gale sets up Earle, and the Wimbledon captain does a nice shot staying on sides and gives his side the 1-0 lead. Liverpool trying to respond as Vegard Hegem finds Paul Ince in the box. He is taken down by Andy Roberts. Referee Gary Willard awards Liverpool a penalty. Ince hits the floor after the slight push. Guess who's going to take the shot? Michael Owen. Oh, he's denied by Scotsman Neil Sullivan. Owen did not get all of that one. Sullivan makes the easy save. Owen not able to capitalize. Neil Sullivan saves the 1-0 victory for Wimbledon.